Are you garbage if your driver's side window doesn't roll down so you recline and order through the backseat window at the driveway? <laughs> we got a number two and uh... I dropped a nickel, give me a second. You guys still serving breakfast? What's up? Gang, all tickets are on sale right now for the 2024 Through the Roof Tour over there at RUGarbage.com. Welcome to another exciting edition of Are You Garbage? The show where you find out if your favorite comedians are classy individuals or absolute trash. Now, here are your hosts, Kevin Ryan and H. Foley. Hey, everybody out there, and welcome back to everybody's favorite podcast. This is Are You Garbage? Mm -hmm. It's that little show we sit down with your favorite comedians, and we find that if they're good to be classy, yeah. or if they're just a big old piece of trash. Trash, trash, trash. I'm your host, Dave Foley, coming at you on a beautifully sunny day. We're mm -hmm. out back here at Tootie's in the new edition. Not used to the sun. It's been gloomy for a while. You're right. When I went upstairs to wake up Tootie and open up the curtain, she was like, Dracula, okay. <laughs> kissing at me. All right. All right, fair enough. <laughs> I don't need this shit. My co-host is coming at you from right next to me. He is the CEO of Are You Garbage. Mm -hmm. He's an international businessman and my best pal in the whole wide world. Give it up for KJ, Kevin James Ryan, everybody. What up, gang? Thanks for tuning in. As always, please make sure you rate, view, subscribe on iTunes. Full video available on oh, YouTube. Yeah. As you know, those numbers are... True to real. Cooking, baby. Cooking. Then, obviously, the greatest website of all time, www.patreon.com. Slash Are You Garbage. You go over there, you get up to a bajillion hours worth of content. Uh, also, all tour tickets are on out right now www.rugarbage.com check it out grab those tickets gang they're going quick we mm -hmm. want to see you out there and how about a nice quick shout out to our producer extraordinaire the magic man makes us all look good works the ones the twos threes fours crosses t's and he dots eyes give it up for t-bone mcscruffins toby mcmullen everybody what up boys what up t-bone dude we got uncle jay over uh, Ooh, what's uncle not Jay's to love man. he's so sweet he's so charming he calls Tootie mrs t which i like <laughs> <laughs> hey do mrs t hello jay how are you Good to see you. Gang, the long hair ain't lying. Mm -hmm. We are here for our third installment, uh, the third installment, The Chronicles of Jason. Uh, scientists and historians will be studying these episodes <laughs> or, for years or at least to come. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I am, I mean, I'm crushed. I came in, you had to go in the back of the fridge to get me uh, some afternoon white claws. Yeah, to crush. it's crazy, dude. I You're mean, gonna... it's not even a beer. This we... doesn't even imply I have a problem. It just reinforces our garbage. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we are documenting documenting the uh, the, the life of of of, of, a, of a man here in the late twentieth and early twenty first century. Like I said, <laughs> aliens will be looking at this years from now, studying. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Big J Okerson. Hey. Thank you, fellas. Let's go here for Volume Three: The Chronicles of Jason. <laughs> <laughs> Which I really, you're, you're pushing that, and I like it. I gotta I like be honest it. with you. It's all right. Sold. Run, yeah, you didn't run that by anybody, but uh, buddy, I'm. I feel it. like every once in a while, somebody should come in with like one of those big like things and just like measure your head <laughs> and like do a tape measure, or you should have some type of probes or electrodes on your head as we're studying you. Right we'll make now. a chapter book of the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have what to volume. We'll have to sell it like Time Warner, like like those late night commercials. It's like yeah, three, yeah. three, three, three complete. Sex. Exactly. Zero yeah. leather bound volumes. Yeah. <laughs> also, our fans can only buy one volume at a time. <laughs> I got the, I got years eighteen through thirty two. You do like old encyclopedias. They come in your month as a subscription. Every week you get your new J episode. <laughs> Going straight to the back looking for the titties. <laughs> All right, so we were talking before. We want to we want to take a step back. Last time you were here, we went thoroughly went through your your cleansing schedule. How you Which shower? Is Bonkos, by the way, <laughs> but I respect it. That was a four hour episode. <laughs> <laughs> we want to take a step back. We want to go to junior high, high school era. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, give me uh, um, give me those specific years. Yeah. Of like, when did you enter sixth grade? What year was that? And what was junior high for you? Was it sixth, seventh, eighth? Junior was uh, six, seven, eighth. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then, yeah. So nine, traditional seven, middle school, as yeah. we would call it. Um, what year see. was that? What year were you in sixth grade? I graduated grade? 95. Okay. So that would be, what, 89? Okay. So okay. 1989. And where are we doing this at? Are we, are we in Jersey already? No, no, no. No, Jersey wasn't until uh, almost 17. Okay. So no, still West Philly. So we're in West Philadelphia. We're in a Philadelphia public school system. Yeah, I am... How old are we saying? 89, so I'm 12. Yep. Step Pop's around. Step Pop is around. Okay. Step Pop's around for about a year. And you're living with him and your mother in uh, your mom's house. And now baby brother, yeah. And now baby brother. Ah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. 
uh, it was one of the, if, if you were curious, <laughs> baby brother, uh, part of the wedding of my mom and stepfather. Yeah, I got that too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's, it's a certain kind of Philly trash where Kids they're the already... ring bear or whatever. They're always the ring bear. Dude. What was his name? What's your, what's your little brother's name? Bobby. Bobby. I would have said Ted Nugent. <laughs> <laughs> Junior. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you know my younger brother, the grave digger. <laughs> little brother, the Motor City Madman. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you're in sixth grade. We call him Ted Nugget. He's just <laughs> yeah. oh, God, that's adorable. <laughs> what, what are you wear? What 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 what's the style of little Big J Okerson at this point? So I had the problem of like I really wanted to be in. Like, I wanted to be, yeah. yeah, I really that's really. That's how we did. all ended up here, big guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really I wanted, wanted to be, to be in. in, but. You're such a sweetheart. Yeah, I was so. such I was such a uh, a little fatso. <laughs> they didn't make all the things, so I would when I would just try, it would just be bad. It's one of my I've told on things before. One of my favorite, as far as clothes, like my grandmother, uh, God rest her soul, she uh, would take me school shopping always. Uh -huh. My mom was broke, so she would take me school shopping, and she kind of had the take on it. Like, well, you know what you like, and you know what like you want to wear, so. You pick it, it out. She wasn't really doing like a, you should wear this. You gotcha. Should. If I was like, this is the style. Uh, and that backfired on me several times. <laughs> I had a, uh, these are things, these are things that. Shows up with a beret. I'll give you two <laughs> things for sure. Purchased, never worn. I have so many. Thank of God. Yeah. Because like, I was like, it was a preschool year statement. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, something in the off time of the school year, you're like, Next year, I'm going to change every, like, I'll be different. I'm going to be, you're also, I feel, I'm a very different guy when I'm shopping versus when I get home and the rubber hits the road and I got to wear, <laughs> I got to wear this out my front door yeah. specifically to record on a podcast. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah. this ain't happening. Exactly. There's no eyes on you in the dressing yeah. room. I thought I loved red blazers when I was at the oh, mall. Absolutely. <laughs> and I remember the two of them that I remember never wearing was, uh, do you remember used brand? No. Mm -mm. So it was uh, purposefully tattered. Like clothing, you know, okay. like the rips that had like the something under them. And okay, everything. Mm -hmm. I got one that was uh, a denim duster. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> Teal blue and black. Uh, Is that it right there? That, that might, might be. be it. It. <laughs> yeah, you put used duster, used brand duster. <laughs> Dude, that I mean a duster. You're and... on a sixth grader. <laughs> <laughs> you look like a you look like a time traveling bounty hunter. <laughs> Where can I park my horse? You dead, type in dead my right. robot horse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dude, what the <laughs> fuck? That's crazy. <laughs> I want this to show up so bad. No, that's uh, not uh, it. Close, close. This that back. this this yeah. is like full length, dude. Yeah. yeah. I this mean, is yeah. something Jamiroquai would look. wear. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, dude. Holy uh, shit. Uh, something like that. But, also, it had, but, it had, a, but it had worse than that because it had fake rips all over it and like teal <laughs> under them. It was bad. That uh, and then my grandmother. Those decisions should not be left to a sixth grader. I should. understand. There's got to be some type of parental Also, guidance. as a guy, as a bigger guy myself, <laughs> a kid, we don't have the proportion. We're too wide for that. That needs to be on a tall, skinny guy. No, and that's what also what happened, too. My step pop came around. Come and looking thought, like a couch. I thought my step pop, like, dressed cool, and maybe it probably was for the time. It's the 80s. Mm -hmm. But I was looking, one, at the school. I couldn't do the school styles. And then I would try to do like kind of emulate his thing, some pleated jeans. Sure. He uh he had like some stylish cowboy boots that he'd wear with things. Uh -huh. He was big on the t-shirt tucked into the I was big, belt but pants. If, if, not, uh, not the t-shirt. I'm sorry. The uh the button-down shirt. Okay. Tucked into the pants, but open with the tank top. He was like in shape. My step pop. Uh, if you can Guy. pull that off, that's all right. He was killing it. But then I would be like, oh, maybe I'll try his things, and they didn't work either. <laughs> but that. But one time shopping for the school clothes. City Blue on sure. uh, up on 69th Street. Uh huh. Oh, I know what you're talking about. And uh, I was in there, and they had knock off MC Hammer, huge at the time. MC Hammer uh, had the hammer pants, the parachute pants. And for some reason, they were they were basically those, but they on the I always remember on the sign it said Bobby Brown pants, <laughs> like because they were because they were cheaper. Came with coke in them. <laughs> <laughs> so Bobby Brown pants, uh, all they had in my. Wait, Elastic waist and everything. Yeah. Still had sizes. And the only thing they had in my size was like gold, like a dull gold. Oh. But I'm like, this is the thing people are wearing, though, so I'm getting these pants. That belt was thick, too. That elastic was thick. Yes. Around it. 
It was like wearing like the championship belt. It's crazy. Yeah. I picture you crab walking into the car. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh. And I. Uh, oh, oh, oh no. <laughs> so I. Uh, I forgot my. Lunch. I got those. My grandmother and her uh, her were best they friend expensive Anita. at the time? Like I'm sure they were. That probably. duster had to be a pretty penny. That's a lot of at dental. the time. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, 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 probably a little bit. But uh, the, the hammer pants, I don't remember being anything that expensive. But uh, what I remember is my uh, my grandma's best friend Anita. <laughs> hammer pants and a duster, like you're in the world's worst posse. <laughs> I know, dude. That's crazy. I think it was two separate trips. I think Burlington Coat Factory was the duster. <laughs> meet, me, meet me at high noon for a break dancing competition. <laughs> <laughs> So I buy these gold uh, hammer pants, <laughs> of course. My grandmother and Aunt Anita go. They, Aunt they Anita? Like, Aunt Anita's her best Wait, friend. Wait, her name was Aunt? Aunt Anita. That was her name, or you called her Aunt No, no, Anita. I called her. It was my grandma's best friend. Okay, so, so we her name called. was Anita. Anita, yeah. Okay. So my grandma's friend, Anita. <laughs> Aunt Aunt Anita. Grandma's, that's my grandma's best friend. They uh, <laughs> were, it's so funny, also because I was so young, I don't realize how young they were. They were just in their 50s. Yeah, that's crazy, yeah. And, but, my, but they were still like, you know. 50 something year old ladies and sure. they were getting into the walking laps around the schoolyard fence mm -hmm. for exercise and they each bought a pair I think my Aunt Anita bought some Zubaz okay and my and my grandmother bought a pair of hammer pants also <laughs> and I went home with my pants and my mom and step pop were just I remember sitting on the couch just going like all right show us like what your school clothes are so I go get you know whatever jeans and stuff I show them and I'm throwing at the end I show them like I'm excited I'm like, yo. You're doing a little fashion buckle. show. Yeah. Now I do the first. I, I'm getting ready to pull out the hammer pants. <laughs> I showed buckle you up. the day to day. <laughs> now here comes, here comes the closer. <laughs> My All right, you guys, you guys think that's already a pretty nice wardrobe, right? That's already a pretty nice wardrobe. I know you guys are thinking. <laughs> So you guys are sitting here probably going like, "That's the way." If I stopped right there, you'd be you'd be like, "You did good work today." Son. I just picture the people's court playing real low on the TV. Oh uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> Sun coming in, smoke filled room. Oh yep, absolutely. Two butts going, some cool filter kings and some Newport hundos. Hey, you're about to wow them. So yeah, so I go yeah. This, this mood couldn't be set more perfect, and I walk out. Uh, in these gold hammer pants, and I'm just walking normal. With, you know, <laughs> you look like a hammer, all right? Like, I'm walking. Up, no shirt. What are you wearing on top? I don't remember. But a shirt, definitely a shirt. I wasn't that kid. A shirt, probably a turtleneck under a sweater. <laughs> oh, I think man. it's what I remember. A cool kid in school wearing the hammer pants had a turtleneck sweater with the chain around the turtleneck. Oh, on. big. Sure. So I was like, uh, that's what I. That's come what out with your mom's I'm like, I'm like, I gotta wear a thing. So I come out in these pants. And my my step pop and mom, they're laughing so hard. They're laughing, which is making me really sad. And you want to build a kid's confidence, ladies and yeah. gentlemen. I'm sitting, I'm sitting, there and I start laughing. And then my my step pop goes, "What's uh?" He goes, "Why is all this shit all bunched up in the middle?" And then when I stepped my ankles apart, and they saw like the low crotch thing, they laughed. It was like Def Jam front row. They were hitting each other, like falling out. And I, uh, I what's went in my room. The, what's a little long in the crotch there, huh, Jason? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, uh, I went in my room and took them off, put them away. <laughs> and uh, they just became my I'm sick at home pants. I've never wore them out of the house once. You're just sitting in them farting and they're inflating. <laughs> they're just, <laughs> they were, they never, when we moved eventually, when we eventually moved, uh, uh, they were like, oh, wow, they're in the bottom of the dresser still. I couldn't believe they were still there. Um, and then the other thing I remember from uh, shopping for clothes, my grandma, then my grandmother started dating. So there was That's a, a sentence only here on this show. <laughs> <laughs> so my grandfather- Get back out there. My grandfather passed uh, at 57 years old. Okay. Uh, I was, I want to say I was nine or 10. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, he got asbestos from- uh, or mesothelioma, whatever, from shoveling asbestos when he was in the Navy, in the oh, Navy shit. Yard. Mm -hmm. So he died uh, relatively young. And uh, it was just my mom and my grandma. So my grandmother, then there was another guy on the street that lived across the street from my grandmother, where I spent nights a lot. That was like, the neighborhood we played in. And uh, Jerry Silver. <laughs> Wait, hold on. You spent nights at his place? No, no, no. no Jerry think, Silver at, at my grandmother's. Grandma. At my grandma's. Oh, okay. and, so, like, that was his and one of the proxy neighbors across the street okay. was uh, Jerry Silver and his wife. And he was like the nasty guy in the neighborhood. He was like the, if your ball went on his lawn, he'd tell you sure. that you couldn't go on his lawn. He told us there was acid on his lawn that would eat our shoe. Like, all kinds <laughs> of, he was crazy. very mean guy. His wife died. And then at some Ooh. point when I was like 
11 or so, just started dating my grandmother until the day she died. No shit. Which was two years ago. Wow. Um, Jesus. Jerry just died too. Uh, he was a very nasty guy. And always through the whole, like, he made my grandmother happy, so we were like, great. But, Did I mean, he like, get nicer to you? Did he warm up to you at all? No. Really? <laughs> and uh, what I, what am I, <laughs> I put those pants my, on. <laughs> one of my core memories of Jerry was going to, uh, at this point I'm shopping big and tall. Mm-hmm. And I'm a kid. And we're going there, and I'm picking out my jeans or whatever, and he's the guy, like like like, like a sitcom. He's pawing at and, and yelling throughout the store how much room I have in this crotch. Why is the crotch so low? Because, you know, I'm wearing them sagged or yeah. whatever. It's just like the, and he's just yelling that. I remember, I'll never forget that. In front of, like, in front of, by the way, they stopped doing this now. They employ, and I'm good call, uh, DXL. They hire fat people now, almost oh, exclusive, yeah. almost exclusively, or at least chubby, because they used to have just any retail job, like hot chicks working there, and you got to come in as a little kid and be like, "Nice boobs." Do you have a five X for an eleven year old? A five X short. <laughs> Where's your wide cut pants? I need something in a forty two twenty, honey. This is always a uh, and unrelated to the clothing, but just to put a button on Jerry. Mm-hmm. My grandmother passed two years ago, and then uh, in the Jewish uh, faith, they do like after a year if she's uh, buried, then they do like a unveiling of the headstone. Mm-hmm. So we went back for that. This is the last time we're ever going to see Jerry. He's ninety something, still driving somehow, but he's uh, not, and he's just like, why would we ever see Jerry again? Sure. There's just okay. no reason to. And uh, after the ceremony, you know, all the cars are lined up at the uh, at the cemetery. And me and my step pop and brother go to smoke a butt just between cars. And at one point, it's raining. It's just a just sad thing. Loud three honks in a cemetery. <laughs> we we, we kind of jump and we look back. And I swear to you, this is the last thing ever Jerry Silver uh, did with our family. We turn around and look. It's Jerry in his car. And he goes, <laughs> clears it. And we moved out of the way. And Take he speeds <laughs> off. And we were like, bye forever, Jerry. Good knowing you, dude. Uh, Holy shit. What a fucking 30 something year run yeah. of just this guy that was never nice to anybody. So weird. Get out of the way. <laughs> yeah, he just move and then drove off to die, I think weeks or months later. <laughs> the car just slowly <laughs> veers off and hits a headstone. <laughs> really, you should have just done the thing where after that he goes, move. And then we see the thing where like uh, the car just vanishes like slowly. Paul Walker. And then, yeah, and then you hear like, and then you hear my voice going, like, that was the last time we ever saw Jerry. Is it a Wonder Years? Okay, let's talk about Box Awesome, baby. Shit. Shout out the box off. You like cool stuff, Pinhead? I do, Dorcas. <laughs> yeah, you do, gang. It's a stressful time of the year. You got a lot going on. You need a little something to look forward to. You know what's nice? Every month that box awesome shows up. Oh, yeah. A lot of cool stuff in there. You got grooming stuff. You got stuff for outdoor grilling. You got outdoor stuff. You like you like pocket knives? Huh? Uh-huh. You like cool hammocks and all that kind of good stuff? Show off to your friends. Say, check this out. Bang. There you go. Do yourself a favor. Get a box awesome delivered right to you. Yeah. Uh, they the, the box that I just got was like a, a whiskey kit. Had the, had, the, had the nice rocks, real nice, heavy rocks glasses. It's got the ice, the big round ice cubes. Love those. Had the boys over. We cracked a bottle. Good night. Glug, 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 glug. Uh, it's fantastic. It's easy. It's and then as my boys are sitting there, we're sipping a nice glass of whiskey. Like, oh, these are nice. What is this? Like, oh, it's box awesome. Get on board. Came right to the door. 90% of everything that comes in your box of awesome is from a small up-and-coming brand, so you'll be getting great stuff and supporting a small business. Get a free mystery gift in your first monthly shipment when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter the code GARBAGE at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com, code GARBAGE for a free mystery gift with your first monthly shipment. Boxofawesome.com, code GARBAGE. Do it, gang. Do it. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Okay. Gang. Therapy isn't only useful when the relationship is on the rocks, which mm-hmm. we know it can be sometimes. Oh boy. It's also helping when things are going great, when things are going smoothly. It's good to have a little touchstone. Dump a little gas on the fire. The best relationship happens when both people put in the work to make the relationship great, and better help can make you help you do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, BetterHelp is online therapy that can be done anywhere, anytime. You set the schedule. You pick the therapist. You can talk to your therapist via video call, phone, or even message. No matter how you like to communicate or what kind of availability you have, BetterHelp is flexible and ready to work with you. It's fantastic. I've always said this. I'm a big fan of talk therapy. 
And you don't have to be, it's like you get in and you do it for a hundred years. You can use it at certain times of like, hey, I'm a little rough. I got this thing going on. I just moved my check confidence, back in. something. Just just check back in, couple, two, three weeks, couple months. You talk to them, you figure it out. And this is an easy way to get in the therapy pool. You do it from the comfort of your own home. You don't got to go meet a guy or a girl or some bozo. They're mm-hmm. judging you. None of that. If you think of if you're thinking of starting therapy, definitely give BetterHelp a try. Visit betterhelp.com slash garbage today to get ten percent off your firstly month. That's betterhelp H E L P dot com slash garbage. Do it. Yeah. Okay. So the clothes that was the <laughs> So you have two articles so close, of clothing that you didn't wear. Uh, well, but I was all but everything I had was trying, so it was funny. And also I didn't have the, the name brands. So. You never wore the duster, right? Never wore the dust. Never wore the dust. So where did you land? Was it more t-shirt? Like what? What? Like you know, jeans every day. Jeans every day. What kind of shoes we doing? Uh, Cool. You were trying to be cool, like cool Nikes or Nikes. I get in hindsight, none of it looked cool. (laughs) It just, I don't. It always looked just like fat and tight. And I made so many mistakes. Buddy, been there. When they, uh, when they did the (laughs) fat. Do you remember the? Sounds like a bad haircut. Pour some sugar on me video. (laughs) Yeah, of course. So that video, the big thing to me was how cool that dude looked because he had the first I ever saw like shredded up jeans. Like every, there was like rips everywhere with the fringes hanging off them. And I wanted that, I didn't know how to do that. So I went, took a pair of my pants and I just snipped. I took it just a shot with scissors, vert, like a horizontal, mm-hmm. every couple inches. And then I put it on, it looked like death by a thousand bee <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah. Just my fat little pasty white skin would just blow a bubble up at everything. Fray. Yeah, that's, that's when like you'll find out it doesn't fray It's instantly. supposed to be done by a, a person who does that. Mm-hmm. Right? Sure. You're supposed to just take slices out. You need like 25 washes to get that fray out. Yeah. <laughs> it looked so, I would just try everything. Uh, the, the one, uh, the one off overalls. But, oh. I, but it was, what was funny was getting like, finding like, there was a couple fat brands that would make knockoffs of the stuff. So How I never, big were I, you? I never had Cavaricis. But I had like Hugo Boss more made like <laughs> Hugo Boss made some like pleated pants. Sure. Yeah, I mean that were like look this. Look how how big yeah, were how you big in sixth you? grade? What are we talking? When I go back, at, I tell you the standard of fat has changed. Sure. Oh, when, yeah. I, when I go back and look at pictures, it really was like somebody probably could have caught me all the way up to like sixteen, seventeen, like and just been just, been just been like slight changes. Light off the get cola. You. Yeah. It, it just something, which my step pop did at times. But yeah, I was like. Uh, were you a tall kid? Were you Pretty big? Tall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was tall. How also. tall are you now? 6'3". You're 6'3". So what would you say you were 6th, 7th, 8th grade in middle school? Probably close to 6 foot, like pretty quick. No shit. Yeah, All right. Yeah, yeah. And how, 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 what do you think you were tipping the scales at? Two? two it was over two over so Over two? Yeah, when I was so young. Quick. I remember, yeah. I, remember, I, just, I don't remember ever fighting for under two. And okay. then I don't remember, like, uh, and then I remember a nice time being over three. Okay. But uh, I remember cracking a hundred in elementary school where they had to go and weigh you. Yeah. You had to go get like your height, your eyes, in front your ears. of people. Yeah, oh. and it was like you and like the three people with your last name, like right at. They would send you down on like the fat five. index where they do your body mass or whatever. It's yeah. all. Uh, I, I, I was like, this isn't scientific. <laughs> <laughs> That's stay with me. <laughs> this guy's drunk. <laughs> <laughs> How are you gonna calculate that with a ruler? <laughs> that stuff stays with me so much that when I go to the doctors now, currently, and they weigh me, I go, don't tell me. I just yeah, no, yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 I just don't well. look, and I, I just don't look, and I just don't tell me. I go, I, and then I, when they look at, it, I go, tell me. I go, are you super concerned? <laughs> and they were like, they'll be like, nah, I mean, you should lose weight, but I mean, like, and I'm like, well, okay, I knew all that. Right, all right, right. Okay, 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 yeah, yeah. That's I, I'm fine to live in that world. Sure. They're always they always try to be real nice to me. They'll be like, all right, you're three sixty five, but with the shoes and your shirt and all <laughs> that, kind of stuff. You're still a fat piece. <laughs> like I'm wearing. Leg How about boots? some about uh, like lying to yourself you if got, they have? You got ski boots on. <laughs> Bobby Kelly may have been saying this the other day, but I've done this. You're lying to nobody but yourself. I've done oh, that yeah. when they have the, sometimes the scale has the bars for old people next to it. Mm-hmm. And if the doctor's on this side of me, I'll touch it with a couple oh, fingers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, get a little bit of pressure off. Sure. You'd probably knock about 15 off and finger push. <laughs> Easy. Uh, All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. 1989. <laughs> Wait, did you ever rock a generic basketball jersey for like not a real team, like a city stars? No. Or like- no, you can't do that in Philly. Yeah. Now you'd caught you'd caught some shit for that. <laughs> but I didn't wear jerseys really much ever until I was like an older teenager because they were expensive and stuff at the time. So mm-hmm. how were you getting to school in the morning, say in junior Walk. high? You were walking. Yeah. What was that walk like? How long? Uh ten minutes, fifteen minutes, but it's like uh in the straight sn- uphill. In- 
I mean, it was. It's, it's so well. So you know, it's never funny. had a shot, baby. <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, Overbrook Show Park, the homeroom, sweating out of breath in your hammer pants. <laughs> Sweating through them because I got gold. <laughs> Nothing that hides ass sweat. I thought these be more breathable. Oh, I bought. A, I remember when I bought a Hugo Boss uh, acid wash jeans or stone wash <laughs> jeans for the first time. You were taking swings. Yeah, the stone wash jeans. To. One time, uh, at that point, I was in school band, so I'd go in early to take drum lessons. Okay. Uh, by myself, and thank God, I was in there by myself because I was in there and I bent over at one point, and the ass. Just blast it out of them. <laughs> blast it. And this is like tidy whiteies. You didn't know any better when you were a kid. So I'm wearing tidy whiteies. And I mean, just ass blast out of them. And then I just held the ass shut and walked the 10 minutes the back, uh, home. back home. Yeah, yeah that shit. was the end of the day for me. Yeah, yeah I'm sick. I <laughs> cut school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they, no one was ever home when I was in uh, school. So like, oh, I was able to cut a lot. And I did. I never even cut so rarely. Once or twice did I cut school with like a friend and do something. Most of my cuts were like I just didn't want to go and watching like. Uh, the price I, is right also, right. The, the price is right for sure. And yeah. then even like I they would watch the things that I just knew the stories from my mom and them like Young and the Restless or something you know some soap opera because oh, I was like right. I know who the characters are <laughs> I don't really like it. Watching Luke and Laura's are. wedding or whatever. There's no it was. cable. We didn't have any cable or anything. <sighs> but uh, yeah, the clothes were. Yeah, it was always a mess. But I was trying so hard. Yeah, I Gee. really wanted it to work out <laughs> with those clothes. Did you have a trapper keeper and all that stuff? Would you get that kind of stuff? Yeah, get the trapper keeper. What were you doing for lunch? Were you buying your lunch at school? Or were you bringing it? Um, depends if I. It depends if I stayed at my mom's that night or would my she grandparents. Make it? No, with mom it was you were gonna get like two bucks for the school lunch, sure. okay, twenty five, whatever it was. But that, uh, yeah, I remember people saying that they, some people grew up with school lunch that was like okay. And now some of them have like fast food restaurants like and stuff, yeah. 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 And just or you could leave and go like get something that's like decent or, or whatever. And even when I went to switch to schools in Jersey when I was seventeen, like that school lunch, I'm like, this ain't so bad, but dude. Our school lunch when yeah. I was a little kid was fantastic at St. Nicholas St. Mary's when I was in uh, grade school. It was awesome. Yeah, I didn't mind. But this school, it was crazy. They had snacks. My school, because I remember I still have like nostalgia for some of the brands, mm-hmm. Jacks. Sure. Uh, were the cheese puffs? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The cheese curls. Oh yeah. Of course. Uh, Jack's the Linden cookies. Yeah. The three packs. Mm-hmm. They have the oatmeal yeah. raisin, the double fudge chocolate, and chocolate chip. Mm-hmm. And then if you got lucky, butter toffee. Butter toffee. Yeah. Grandma did those too. Remember grandma cookies? Yeah. Grandma Similar, cookies. but the Linden butter toffee. Man, those things had a snap to they them. Had a snap to them. They, they were, were a good great. milk cookie. Woo! To this Wee. day, my deli on the corner sells them. I'll pick up a butter crunch every now and then. Yeah, the I'll butter crunch crazy. is underrated. Yeah, underrated cookie for sure. Three pack too. And they had those, but the lunch was fucking crazy. It was a tin foil, like, you know, like tray, yeah. basically, with a cardboard thing over it that was like smushed on it. And the cardboard had outlines of like the, what's, what's in each thing. So it's like an the outline of, of Salisbury steak. Yeah. Like, Five circles for peas, mm-hmm. right? With you know carrot squares, and then like whatever was it? But it was pu- I mean, the smell of it was so bad. It was no good. No, no, no. It was it was god awful. So you would just not do that. Or I also like made friends with a bunch of like little guys. <laughs> so by the time like not understanding why I'm fat and your other friends aren't, like my friends with little guys, they wouldn't even bat an eye. I'm like, did your mom give you a bagel with chive whipped cream cheese again? And he's like, yeah, you want half? Like, yes. Yeah. And they didn't care. They're like, sure. I probably wasn't going to eat it all anyway. I go, mm-hmm. what's that process like? Imagine Throwing food dude, out. That, that's insane for somebody to ask me, can I have half your lunch? And me be like, oh, yeah, I'm not going to. Like, that's insane. First of all, for twenty-five, and how disgusting that meal was when you opened it up, I just ate every bit of it because you're like, well, it's my food. <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't even think anything other than that. I've never th- those are, and I see it in children now, and, uh, and th- but it's like that, like now you have to finish your food, mm-hmm. or like my like my daughter's sister even is like uh, like ten years old, and I see you have to like corral them, yeah, like, and I was like, man, we could have been in the middle, we could have been like uh, down by two, we have the ball on the one mm-hmm. outside. <laughs> And they go, we're ordering cheesesteaks. I'm like, bye, guys. <laughs> Are you going to finish all your cheesesteak? You don't need a whole cheesesteak, do you? You're a little guy. You're, you're at lunch. Some kid's like, food fight. You're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Hey, everybody, <laughs> slow down. <laughs> I, pull out a, I pull out a catcher's mitt. He goes, all right, let's do it, guys. Sap. Sap. 
Timmy, you're throwing heat today. <laughs> yeah, a couple snowballs. <laughs> Ring ding. Any type of trade was stiff negotiations, man. I held on to that real tight. I remember. I would hold on to mine real tight, but yeah. I'd see if I can get away. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah. almost like, you know, it's like, I'll kiss you on the mouth. We had a kid that was like real sensitive about that, didn't want anybody touching his food. Like, if you touched his food, he would just give it to you. And man, I'd go over there, eh, 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 like pushing buttons like, on oh, him. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember, Lick his fork. <laughs> I remember realizing I was, it hit me in like, I was, must have been junior or senior year. Because we had it at that point, like, you know, they had like pizza every day, fries, you get burgers. Because it was like, this was like the early 2000s. And every day I would get either like a two soft pretzels and fries and an iced tea. And I wanted to be like, I was like, I'm not really eat. like in my head. That was just like, I'm going to have a snack. And looking back, I'm like, that's fucking like a week's worth a of carbs. Something. Yeah. And like t- uh, two months worth of sugar out of my, those fucking Swiss iced teas. What was your soft ex, pretzel plug? My ex, uh, uh, with, in Philly at the thing they didn't have uh, in the school. No, no. But when we moved to Jersey, they did a nice pretzel braid. Oh, oh and the oh, Rita's kind of, pretzel braid, the pretzel is braid killer. that has the salt on it that makes the bag get wet. Yeah, baby, Speaking gentleman's pretzel. And for and for some reason, because it was the school selling them, you could have them in class in South Jersey. Really? Oh. Having a snack while you're learning, and a glass of water, eating a loaf, eating a loaf, <laughs> and of, a bread loaf of pretzel in science class. And again, I'll tell you, I had to. <laughs> I had to stop myself from just problematic eating like a candy bar. Mm-hmm. I had to break pieces off because I'm like, everyone's going to see it's, my bag. It's still in the bag. Come over and karate <laughs> chop my bag halfway through and realize there's nothing in there. <laughs> I keep blowing it back up. Yeah. <laughs> Put it down. Like a Frenchman oh, shopping. You got yet. a baguette sticking out. <laughs> I might finish that. I don't know. Oh, oh God. God damn, the food in school. Uh, my school was terrible. And then that sucks. And then briefly, uh, I want to say it was junior high. Yeah, like sixth grade. I think it was, that was the year. So again, my step pop was pretty new in our lives and I was starting to get the like, he's starting to make some rules. That sure. seems weird. And I, nothing crazy, obviously. My step pop's still with my mom. That's, I love him dearly. But like, it was just new. Mm-hmm. And I was starting to do the, the t- kid that was raised by his mom and grandma for all that in between time. Mm-hmm. So my grandpa died and everything. So like, it was very close to my grandmother too. And like my step pop started getting so I started doing like the dad, like dad. If I was living with dad, it wouldn't be bad. sure. And then my mom was like, you know, smart. She was like, yeah, you know what? You should go. You should go with your dad. I'm like, Pff, I will then. I, you can almost tell from my dad. I didn't hear the reaction because like he p- tried. To, I'm sure to give me positive reaction. Mm-hmm. But when I said that, my mom says I can move out there. I mean, in hindsight, feeling his voice be like. <laughs> what? What's this? Oh, God. And I was like, yeah, they said I can move out there. And he's like, uh, you know. I got a busy okay. June coming up. I don't know. <laughs> so somehow he agrees. It's tax season. Somehow he agrees. And uh, I go out there. And this for was Ohio or something. Ohio. Right? Canton, Ohio. Wait, what year is this? Sixth grade. So this is in the middle so of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like six three, but it's short lived. So you go Philly, Ohio, Philly, Jersey. That's the overall timeline. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. So you're out of there. And what months? Yeah, this what is, months? This is a blip on the radar. All right. This Hit situation. Us. I don't think emotionally it is. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a blip. So now, how did he get out to Ohio? Uh his company that he worked for. Okay. Testing underground diesel tanks for leaks. <laughs> Man, dude, you are fucking something else. <laughs> My dad can beat up your daddy testing uh, underground uh, diesel tanks for leaks. <laughs> okay. <sighs> specific a set of skills. Yeah, very specific. <laughs> can we test your underground diesel tanks for leaks? <laughs> He didn't clean a leak or anything either. He just, just let you know. It, yeah, yeah hey, you, buddy, guys are, you guys don't want to check that out. <laughs> you, guys are, you guys are fucked. All right, we're out of here. Good luck with that. Uh, you guys are fucked. Uh, this thing's, you guys are leaking diesel all over the place. I'm, I'm not going to get out of here. I don't know if you guys have put eyes on this thing. <laughs> you can get somebody to clean this shit up. It's a mess down there. It's all they do. You like can smell it. <laughs> okay. Uh, who, and who's so, he living out there with? Is he solo? Well, wait. So this is. So he lived. He had that job. Uh, that was like the pa- like the parent company was out of Ohio. He still lived in a conglomerate, De- Delaware, right? or Jersey, with my first stepmother, Kathy, and her uh, great three sons. stepmother name. I think you mentioned that er- in the early in the Kathy. first, yeah. yeah, 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 and her three sons, and uh, he, and then I th- he just started. Uh, I think he he started cheating on my first stepmother with 
a lady who worked at the company in Ohio. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, and then just you know probably was looking for an excuse. And then one day he was like, "How many times are you gonna keep putting the toilet seat down?" Or you know, I'm like he, he uh-huh. just left and moved in with uh, my stepmother in Ohio. So funny in the sense that also talk about a switch in life. My dad, I always thought I may have said this to you already, but I always thought his name was Jay. Like also like Jay. okay, because um, what everybody called him. It's a tattoo he had on his arm. Says Jay, not for me. They didn't call me Jay. They called me Jason. You know, so like Jay on his arm, all of his my, his stepbrothers and stuff, and they went around. My mom, my grandmother, everybody called him Jay. And then uh, he moved to Ohio, and I had to get used to the fact that my father's name is Gary. What? Everyone just called him Jay because like his middle name's James. And then he sold soft pretzels at the stadiums when he was younger, and they called him JJ, the fat soft pretzel boy. And so it got shortened to J. <laughs> it doesn't even rhyme. Oh, doesn't. What the, dude, also not knowing your dad's name till you're older is wild. Pretty wild. <laughs> That's like, a, like Gary. Yeah. Who's, who's Gary keeps getting his mail sent here. Yeah, I thought I was helping him keep up a lie with my stepmother. He goes, they think you're Gary still, huh? <laughs> who's this Gary guy that you missed a ripley uh, So, um, what age did you learn his name? Twelve. That's too old. Eleven or twelve. That is, that yeah. is way too old. Eleven or twelve. <laughs> Who's this scary, <laughs> Who's this scary Who's character? This sca- Dad, what kind of scheme you pulling out here? I'm in. I'll play ball. Let me wet my beak. This could be a real sweet deal for both of us. <laughs> we just tattooed families in different places, different names. You're Gary, we kill this you're, Gary you're, guy. You get confused. <laughs> you know. You know. This is Gary. This is Jay. Ohio. I'm a Gary. I'm Gary. In Ohio. I'm Gary. Nuts. So, uh, <laughs> you know, so when I, when I tell my mom, he he. So he reluctantly. <laughs> takes me out there. My stepmother from the day she met me never quite dug me. <laughs> uh, what a way, and to, someone, what what a way, way to, put to put it, it dude. Someone's explained to me also, it's like, just like, I'm a re- reminder yeah. of just like a different life than sure. he had. I mean, he was like only like 30 when, you know, he was 30 when he met my current stepmother. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like the, the one he's been with since he left Kathy. Um, but I go up there for six months, dude. My stepmother. In so the I, summer school year, when are we talking? I go in like the summer right before the school year starts. Okay. So the plan is you're you're leaving that school. You said your goodbyes to everybody. Goodbye, going to live Lamberton, with my dad. Gay. Robert E. Lamberton, uh, high, uh, Elementary kindergarten school. through 12. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yikes. Kindergarten through 12. Goodbye forever. Mm-hmm. Start my life in Ohio. Mm-hmm. Where again, I go in there with the real like. This is all new me. Mm-hmm. I can oh. really go in here and kill one. I'm gonna do really good in school. Sure. I'm gonna blah blah blah. <laughs> sure. Be good in school. And I'm gonna change everything's gonna be different now. I'm out of the city. Like look at we're like in a I'm Got in a, a house. I'm, there's a house that's attached to it's not even a big house, which is like attached to nothing. It's just like, like a suburban life that I'm like, this is neat. It's like a Disney movie. Yeah. You're excited about also, this. Also, wow. That, he grandma just- so, grandma and mom obviously sad you're going. Very. Okay, yeah, dude, yeah, what yeah, a way to put a single family. I got a house attached to nothing. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Where I'm going, we don't need a joint wall. <laughs> Guys, if I need help, I've got a, a security system. <laughs> nothing touches Is my Is your dad home. doing okay? He's doing pretty good no. out there? <laughs> no, it's just okay. a low, you know, it's just sure. low cost of living out there. Sure. No, no, he's always done like, hey, a win's a win, baby. <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right. And I mean, he works currently in an auto zone. So, like, I mean, delivering parts. So, like, no. Okay. <laughs> and who's in this house with your dad? Is it just the... At the time, ju- maybe he had my first brother, half-brother. With the there. lady that worked at the company? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Are they married? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he divorces Kathy. Divorces Kathy. Marries, marries Diane. Diane. Was he ever Diane. married to your mom or no? Yeah. He was married to your mom. Briefly. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Kim, let's talk about Helix. Shout out to Helix, baby. One of our absolute favorites. We both sleep on Helix mattresses every single night. Mm-hmm. We went over there. We took the quiz. We found out how we sleep, and they paired us up with a mattress that was perfect for us. Yep. I got the California King. I got the Twilight. No big deal. Absolutely fantastic quality product. Do yourself a favor. Pick up a Helix. Uh, yeah, not sure which mattress is best for you. Take the quick, qu- the qu- Helix quick sleep quiz and they'll match what's perfect mattress for you, whatever your needs are. You'll also get a 100-night free trial so you can test your new mattress out in your own home. Kick the tires, baby. Uh, that definitely beats trying them out in the middle of a crowded store in the <laughs> afternoon like some 
freaking bozo. Or a pair of cats. Yeah, let me, let me just qu- catch a quick cat nap over here. Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows. Nice. For all you garbage listeners, go to helixsleep.com slash garbage and use code helixpartner20. The pillows are a sleeper on this. They they're should be pushing right, them because they're whoo wee. That's, a, that's my snuggle pillow. I hug it. This is their best offer yet and it won't last long. That's helixsleep.com slash garbage with code helixpartner20 with Helix. Better sleep starts now. Do it. Do it. So, so he's, he's married three to in. Diane. They yeah. just had a baby. Mm-hmm. And then you roll in. And as you said, she wasn't She wasn't big. stoked. And had your own room? Yeah. Nice. And also, quickly though, in fairness to Diane, I always say this as an adult, you have to reflect. Sure. She did things that I would consider very mean, but probably pretty necessary. Like, I would have things like, I would notice... Again, you didn't, I don't know when I was a kid that I'm eating myself to death. You just like, I love food things. Yeah. And she was, and this is a very like at home at night, like cook, not good cooking. She didn't cook good, but she cooked. Yeah. And I didn't like, I'm used to a life of like. Get the pizza, the cheese steaks, steaks. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. hoagies tonight. You're or, used to single mom living, not family right. unity. So I'm not super into this stuff. This fucking gross ass turkey she used to make that was disgusting. It was like a turkey. It was so bad. Um, it was like a yin yang of dark and white meat, oh. like a tube. What? And I know exactly would, what you're talking about. It was. It, it used to make me so upset. And my dad was just like a fucking put bread and butter and <laughs> slop it up. And he'll eat it with anything. Mm-hmm. So I did a lot of like late night sneaking, grabbing little debbies and all the little <laughs> snacks and heating up super pretzels and all this shit. Then she started hiding snacks, and I really made a point of contention about that. But she was probably saving me from myself. Mm-hmm. But then she meets this guy. That, you know, they, they they start a life together. But her then halfway still. through the summer, the Undertaker. Shows yeah, yeah, up. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Grim Reap. So, and she's just <laughs> we're not, me and her are not connecting. Let's just say, and she's pretty uh, overtly uh, out there about it. And uh, even today, she reluctantly enjoys me, <laughs> like she doesn't want to. And she doesn't always come. Like when I go to Ohio, my dad, my dad will literally walk there if he had to, for, from Canton to Cleveland uh, to get to there, go, yeah, to go see the show. Now, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, I get it. It's awesome, um, sure. But I mean, well, I mean, it's nice. It's nice. It's yeah, nice. I try not to take it for granted because people have lost their dad. You know, like soda. Of course. Or stuff. So I remember I was sort of like, oh, my dad comes early now and wants to have a thing. Where were you on my thirteenth birthday, dickhead? Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But soda's almost like, ah, it's got to be nice. So you go have a beer with your pop. Mm-hmm. I'm like, All right, it is. I yeah. guess. But um, so uh, I go out there and I'm too, try to do all right in school. Ohio was one of the weirdest short-term experiences of my fucking life. It was, I didn't understand it. And I don't know if this would happen today. This, this is going into seventh grade, I would say. Yes. Okay. Yeah, pro- yeah, yeah. So uh, it's, everyone's got a real thing about me being from Philadelphia. City, particularly. Mm-hmm. Like a city. City boy. Rough, the, roughneck city kid coming in. And I didn't get it. But I'm not. I'm like a jolly sure. fucking like, let's, we should all be friends. You want to jerk off in the same room together? I'll do that if you guys say it's, I'll be cool. Sure. <laughs> um, so I'm trying and I'm making some friends. But that, So I make one friend that would say was like a friend friend. I stayed friends with him through years upon even moving back. This kid, Kenny, who was huge, <laughs> black dude. Jack, tall, I mean, six foot five, easy. <laughs> Fat, big, <laughs> big fat kid uh, on the football team was going to go to McKinley, which you may have even heard of that school. It's like where the Hall of Fame is, you McKinley High even School. Heard of that school. No, I haven't. Did you bring him back to Diane's house? Probably like, no, no, no. <laughs> well, Two I, eat her out of house and home. I remember going to his house. It smelled so funny, but he taught me about so much rap. Uh, that Kenny, but Kenny, Kenny was the kid walking home from the bus. Holding the boombox, like he was that kid. Okay, and I would walk with him all the time, and it kind of like was cool because then all of a sudden that that, that city kid shit was just getting where they were like I was being fucking bullied, like off the bus, like on the walk home by these kids, like a and, and like potluck, like no one in particular, um, just a group of these like asshole kids treating you like Rambo. And Get they, out of here! And they weren't scary physically. I mean, as a group, I guess, like, you mm-hmm. know, you're not going to do a thing, but I, one, I didn't want to fight. Uh, you know, I'm brand new. I want to, like, make friends and shit, and, I, and it's also just like, so I'm just, and I also said I don't want to get in trouble. I was getting in trouble also in Philly for, like, fighting and shit a lot. Okay. And I was like, I don't want to get in trouble here. I want to, like, come on, man, this is going to be the turnaround. New year, new you. You guys, I put that life behind me. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> 
I, I don't came, fight no more. I came home and uh, my dad was home early from work or something one day, and he just sees my face like miserable, and he's like, "What's wrong?" And I just open like the curtains, and you just see like, I mean, he's like these like little pasty like blonde haired hillbilly, you know, like fucking hay seeds out there like <laughs> <laughs> the villagers are out there with pitchforks and he was Man. like what's that about i go i don't know like they all know each other and no one knows me so i, I don't know why mm. I, I actually don't understand why they're fucking with me and he was like and then my dad does like you know he's a he's a south philly dude so he's going like you find out which one's got the mouthiest one the mouthiest one you knock him the fuck out yeah. and he's giving me all that advice he goes yeah i go oh yeah i don't want to get in trouble and he's like He's like, no, if you're, if you're defending yourself and these people are saying something, he goes, fuck that. And he's always like, you know, throw the first punch, too. Like, my yeah. dad was like a very, like, street fight guy. Mm -hmm. They're out in front of your house. No, they had already, he was telling me, like, moving on, like, don't just, you don't have to, he was basically saying, like, you don't have to eat this shit because uh -huh. you you're going to get in trouble here. Okay. And, um, and then I went the next day and I was like, oh, nice. So let me, and they came off and someone goes, yo, I heard Marcus is going to kick your ass when we get off the bus. And I was like, okay, you know, like for no right, reason, but for no reason, where's the big guy? He's not Kenny's on the bus. There? Yeah, yeah, he is. You think they'd be petrified of Kenny if he was that big? You'd think. <laughs> 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 Kenny at some point just legitimately told me that he wasn't getting involved. <laughs> In fact, when it all unfolded, he was across the street holding a boombox, like, say anything. <laughs> I mean, he was literally holding a boombox, and he didn't come across the street, and he was like, man, he's like, I don't want to get involved in this, which I thought was weird. But I also did, wasn't pushing him to, like, get my, I was almost just asking him to do, I'm like, hey, don't let me get, like, jumped, please. And he was like, yeah, as I go, so Marcus, and we get to this, someone's, like, front lawn, which is a bad move, too. It's going to get broken up pretty quick. And, uh... Marcus like comes out of the group. It's the smallest. Guy. It's insane. <laughs> this poor kid they sent out to be the one <laughs> to beat up the new kid. I get, he was tiny, and it was a just unbrew. Uh, like, You're you know, almost six foot or six foot at the time. Big kid, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I beat the shit. I mean, as much as like, a kid can. I'm also not like a killer. You know what I mean? Sure, so it's like, yeah. so it's like you know, I hit him on the ground. And I'm giving him like you know the half crying, half like you know whatever. <laughs> you done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of you done. And just going like nutty on him, and then left. Go home. My dad gets home, and I mean, we are. Ch it's the closest I've ever felt to the man. We're so getting along, and he's cheering, and, and he wants to hear about the story and what I did. What? Oh, that's the best. Something happens like the kid, I don't know, the kid's parents knew my stepmom or something. Mm -hmm. So they knew the house number. They call the house phone, and my dad answers the phone. It's that kid's dad calling. Uh -huh. And I don't know what he's saying, and my dad's kind of going like, well, you know, boys will be boys doing all that shit. And then my dad, I don't know what the guy says, but my dad snaps, and he goes, yeah, he goes, you keep going. How about I come back over there, and my son will kick your son's ass again, and then I'll kick the shit out of you on the thing. And I'm like, yeah, dad. This is great. <laughs> this is what we've been missing out on this whole time. My stepmother comes home, and she was like, I let you move here, and you become an animal. And, and she just... Read me down, and that was like the last straw of things. Where I remember just calling my mom, be like, "Can I come home, please? Can I please come home?" Oh my God. And my mom was like, "Yes, a million times, yes." Yeah, yeah. And then I just, I remember going back to my school in Philly, like on a fucking random Tuesday, and going to the office, and Lashanta Frederick going like, "I thought you moved away to Ohio." Like, I'm back, and then just had to walk into a classroom where I knew everybody it was all because I said kindergarten through twelfth grade. Yeah. yeah, I knew everybody. So you walk in the class, and you're like. Oh, that's much better. <laughs> oh, you know, the people who don't give a shit about me don't give a shit. The sure. people who are my friends, my acquaintances. And it was at least you're like, you know what? At least I understand this yes. fucking little nugget. At yeah. least. Man. How long was that? Six months. Jesus. Including like Including summertime. Summer, yeah, 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 summertime. Like, like three months, dude. It was so you were short. back by Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. I'll be in the Thanksgiving bowl. It, it was so bad. Oh, Damn, man. that place sucks. That little bastard Marcus. I wonder what he's doing now. Fucking Marcus, piece of shit. You think <laughs> if that could have blown oh, over, God. maybe it would have turned a little bit. It's very you possible. You straightened everybody out. It's very possible, but I just think, like, in hindsight of it, like, I went for such dumb reasons. Do you know what I mean? It was like uh -huh. that, like, weird, like... Uh, my stepmother would have never like. I don't know. I just would have probably I, never came around. Now I'm You're, not. A, I'm not a Ohio person. You sure, know what I mean, like when sure. I went through the way I grew up, like I said, like almost what we did was exactly like the person I am. Uh huh. Even in my aspirations to this day, it's like no, I want to live in a nice place 
right outside of the place that's got the awesome shit out. So South Jersey was perfect. Right. Somehow in South Jersey, I was closer to like the Sixers and Eagles than I was living in West Philly. Sure. Like travel wise, even you know. Yes. So like, and if yeah. you want to do something fun, so I like being on the on the berm. Mm -hmm. In the, like bur the in chaos. the burbs like that though, in, I, you know, I, I can only the things he listed were the stadiums. That's I know. I, I'll, be, I'll be close to the jet jet row line. I can only speak for the Philadelphia area, but the uh, camaraderie. And I know a quick way to get out. Yeah. Get right back on the highway without yeah, getting traffic. You want to face this way. <laughs> you got to walk a little further, but you know. But the camaraderie in the burbs for the sports and all that stuff, it seems a little tighter and it's a little more you know, I don't know. It's weird. It's like more in your face and more to celebrate. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Because um, there's room. There's yes, like room to true. celebrate. Yes. All oh, right. Oh, God. Jesus Christ. So you're back in South Philly or you're back in West Philly. Yeah, yeah. Then what's the time period between West Philly and so what? Four, three, four years probably? Well, if that was sixth grade. Yeah. Uh, no, more than that. I, I, we moved. I only went to like the last two months of. 11th grade and, and then, then all of 12th year. grade in, gotcha. uh, in, in Jersey. Jersey and wow. what was the what was the catalyst for that your mom and stepdad moved out there yeah 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 they just both they finished college finally okay not finally I mean my stepfather actually finished fast they just didn't decide my mom went back to college at like 29 my step pop went back at like 30 I think or something okay. or maybe 28 uh yeah hmm. he's a little young he's like a year younger than my mom so yeah and there and so and then you they moved out there into a single family home Townhouse. Townhouse. Yeah. Okay. It's still connected. connected. Still connected. <laughs> sure. <laughs> They're still in that townhouse today. Still connected. Still connected. What is the what's the social life at from this after you remove you return from Ohio? What are the friend what's the group of friends looking like? What are you doing on a Friday night? You hanging at the courts? You going to the playground? You start drinking, you start smoking. What's no, the We weren't like party kid. My friends were all like stay over my house and like video games, mm -hmm. watch movies and shit. Okay. You know, like my grandmother would take us to get West Coast video and rent movies. A lot of stand up shit, honestly. But like, uh, okay. You're watching this all up in your room in the house. No, my grandmother's house, the basement. Okay. She was in a row home. So the basement was uh, finished. It had like a, the one room was like carpeted and nice with like a couple of shitty couches. Okay. And like a TV. Mm -hmm. And what was the snack situation at grandma's? What were you and your friends allowed to, to cherry pick out of the fridge? Or what was the move? She kept it very, for one thing today that I still love, that I'll never seem to be able to recapture, skin on pudding in the fr homemade, you know what I'm talking about? Uh -huh. When it exactly gets the skin. Yeah. Skin on. One of the of few things of a texture that seems like it's kind of gross that uh -huh. I don't know why I love a good skin on pudding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the homemade pudding is so much better. But most of it was honestly like she was working pretty hard she always like cared about her weight. She was never heavy at all, my grandmother, but like she just always watched her weight and definitely saw she had a weird grandma's thing of she wanted to spoil me and give me everything I wanted. So we it was, but the in between was not strict, but like the snacks in the house were like Weight Watchers fudge sickles, like brand. <laughs> I've been on the fucking uh, business end of a box of them. Smart. Those things ain't too shabby, yeah, they're dude. they're all right. You no, feel so like right. you're exercising. Oh, the, how about the ice milk bars where it's not even ice cream. It's ice milk with yeah. chocolate hard stuff I around. That. They were great. I remember my mom switched over from ice cream to like, it was like Edie's frozen yogurt. Yeah. And it was, the first couple bites are tough, but. Once you get the taste, once you get the, <laughs> once it gets its hooks in you. Mm -hmm. And it ain't no better than anything else. She would get us like the flavorless popcorn, but like. We always like Molly McButter. You could sprinkle on your own mm. powdered flavoring. What's Molly you. McButter? It was like uh, it's, an it's like the same thing. You it looks like it's uh, like garlic salt or something. Oh, it's just like you oh pour it my god! And you powder up your uh, you powder up your own popcorn. <laughs> it's like the consistency of like the Kraft Parmesan cheese. Yeah, Absolutely. I know what you're yep. talking about. Yeah. Absolutely, Molly McButter popcorn flavoring. So a lot of that shit. It wasn't too much. <laughs> I mean, even when we like snuck and like took booze because we thought we were gonna impress this girl, it was like when we got there, it was cooking sherry. I took. Jesus Christ! <laughs> I didn't. You guys know. want to saute some onions? What's up, baby? <laughs> <laughs> you you bros want to get some aromatics going? <laughs> Getting drunk on Jerry's Jubilee. I got some Pruno if you're down. Yeah. <laughs> you put it, and then you get to the sizzle a little bit, and you bam! <laughs> hey, my parents are, are gonna wake up. Sorry, sorry. You got a hot plate going. <laughs> 
little for you, some for me. <laughs> One for the chef. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> what are the... <laughs> Man, you are fun. Did you just pull up another one of those? Yeah. <laughs> hey, we set him up with my two. sock on. I didn't know. <laughs> sock. This does feel very true detective, to be honest with you. Yeah, you're cracking open. That's the, what we're doing, you're man. You're making little guys out of the cans. <laughs> Time is a circle. <laughs> it's, this is like the Frost Nixon of dirtbags. <laughs> what, were, what were the grades like th- throughout all this? Always just so good. a bulk of your high school was, was, was in West Philly. Yeah. What, what, were what the, was the mascot, by the way? Blue Devils. Okay. That's pretty good. But no uh, external competitive sports except for... Uh, what was it the long distance running the? Uh, I don't understand cross country. That. Cross country, yeah. You did cross country. Oh, they no, did, I didn't do. I'm saying all the school it. had that was like uh, not intramural was cross country. Gotcha. I don't understand that a Philadelphia public school not not being Dude, it in was the- just a broke school. It was like if you look a picture of it online, you can see Robert E. Lamberton uh, High School. It's still it's just covered in gate and could like you- the windows are like barred up and everything. It's like a it's such a weird place. Could you have went to another public school in? The smart kids when we got to high school went to Central. Jesus, dude, that looks. I like had a, a cousin fucking... who what? Dude, my cousin got into Central. It was like we yeah, had a Central party for him or Masterman. Some kids would get into. That looks like a rebel base in that Star looks like Wars. A, that looks like a jail. <laughs> or some of them would go to uh, St. Callistus. You'd move over to like the Catholic school. Some of them. Jesus, that you had to pay for though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and not be Jewish. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> I tend to frown upon yeah, that. Yeah. Tend to frown upon. You know, it's funny when you were asking about the walk to school, and I was saying like ninety degree hill. The way West Philly was broken up, that area Overbrook Park was down the hill and up the hill, and the up the hill kids were like the nice boys, mm-hmm. which is what more of my friends were up there, and then the down the hill kids were like the riff raff, but like the cool kids, mm-hmm. obviously. And I live right on a Brockton Road, which was, even though it was called down the hill, it went back up a hill, and then. <laughs> Lamberton was on the good boys side, mm-hmm. but 90 degrees straight up. So every yeah, day the walk to school was I mean, grueling. It's probably why I didn't smoke. I tried smoking one time on that walk to school with a friend. I took a, a Newport light for my step up when he wasn't looking. You're smoking Newport lights? Yeah. That's an, that's an acquired well, No, maybe taste. Newport hundos even. But uh, whatever it was, I lit it, and to, and being fat and smoking and coughing on that 90-degree walk, I was like, I don't think smoking's for me, guys. <laughs> Never picked it up again until I was like 19 or 20. Oh, hmm. God. So the grades were what, you said? So I had a, a pretty good plan. Every year I knew I was going to uh, fuck off eventually, so I'd go into the beginning. My step-pop's a great resource. My step-pop's brilliant, like, super smart guy. So like, he was a good resource. He also was young and wanted to hang. Okay. You know what I mean? It's basically you know, he's taking care of my baby brother while my mom's at work. He's studying for like school shit, so he just kind of helped. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. like we, uh, so he was like a good resource to like help me do all right. And in the beginning of the year, I would always try to like grind out good grades, um, with as little work as possible, and then coast the rest of the year on like, like okay. seize my way yeah. down on to good like, credit. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I got, I got yeah. good, good. So I was never like I was here. never gonna like really fail for grades or anything, but I never like got an award for grades either. It was but right, like it was just to stay off the radar. My parents didn't get pissed if I just. Kept passing and moving on. C's, and then, couple and, and, B's. Yeah, D's. They D's and F's. They would have like been fear. Even C's and D's. They would have not liked. So yeah, yeah, B C's. Okay. Very very little A's. And what did you want to do? Did you did you have an idea of what maybe you wanted to be when you got older? No, I mean, uh, when did comedian? The cops sounded fun, except they were all banging my mom. <laughs> Sounds um, like a good time if he has me, Jay. For sure, man. She definitely <laughs> kept our fucking apartment safe in that bad neighborhood. <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, also, at the same time, was there any extracurricular activities? Were you part of any groups or anything? Or there was no after school stuff? You would just go home and start watching TV and, and hang you- with friends. No, after school, right away, you'd hang with friends. Yeah. And then I said, it's like high school started to come upon was more like sports every day after school. So it was like after school, and then we're going to go play basketball or football. Would you have wanted to play organized sports? Like, would you, if the school had a football team, would you have wanted to play football or baseball? So. Yeah, I think so. I think I would have. Big kid. What do you mean? Yeah, and then the I remember like one of the my grandmother's neighbors, Joe Caltabiano. What a good name. <laughs> uh, he was like the coach over at St. Callistus for something. He always was saying like he would love me to like go to that school, but it's like one you got to pay for it. Two, I'm Jewish. Three, they uh, wouldn't have let you in. I, maybe they would have, but I'm just saying. Either way, it was just like a school switch so, for like a high football thing. It just seemed like it was more just like him going like, ah, I wish we could have you out there on because uh-huh. I just knew him. He was like the neighbor. 
But uh, no, and then when I went uh, in between junior and senior year to South Jersey, to South Jersey, I did join the football team. Okay, I went to Hell Week. I did the Hell Week training, the two a days. Uh huh. And that was for five days, I think. On the fifth day, this is going into your senior year, I would assume. Yeah. Okay. Because you missed summertime. your time. You yeah, missed yeah. your junior year. Yeah, yeah. For the fifth, uh, fifth day of second in a row. I came and and I was like so excited that this was over the two a days and, and I was even feel like I was doing and I felt like I was doing good that day because I'm like this is it you know like the, you see the light at the end of the tunnel so like I'm gonna put out 110 percent today and we're doing field goal pre- or not field goal uh, punt practice or kickoff practice mm-hmm. where everyone just runs you know it's just like gun for the ball and surround it and I mean this guy kicked the ball and I remember watching the ball go up and start running and I. I just remember going through my head of like how accomplished I felt. I go, one, I feel like I'm not like trailing in the group that much running down there. I'm not running like last. And something I was just like, I'm cutting the wind here. I'm moving. So like, I go, this is good. I'm getting better this you week. Got this whole year in front of you. Everything is coming together. And that coach goes, uh, he goes, oh, Kristen, if you don't get that lead out of your fat ass, I'm going to bite it out. And uh, the next play that we did to run his practice, I faked a knee injury and quit. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Why? I, I was just he like, was hurt. I, I, I was just like, uh, yeah. I was just like, dude, this is not like, I'm not ready. Like this age, I'm not ready to like, like understand the coach, whatever relationship. And I was just like, yo, fuck. This. Like I was like, yeah, I was like bummed. I'm like, damn, also, dude. I mean, and yeah. I'm like, if I was dealing with that since I was like seven years old and Pop Warner or 10 okay. years old, you get, it was just like. I was new in my mind. Also, that's dude Shane Gillis. You go from being one so of the hardest laughs so I've ever made him have. Because when we played football in the street, I also played street football my whole life or field, you know, tackle and shit. But I was like, if you did lines, like you know, maybe I was offensive line for a couple plays. But then it's also like, no, it's good to have me run it sometimes because like I'm hard to tackle mm-hmm. size wise or. I could throw good, you know, so it's like I would be the quarterback in a lot of plays. And then you go on the thing, and they're like, you're offensive line. Yeah. This is, yeah and I was like, oh. I can't be running back. And then I just couldn't learn. Like the, I, I didn't realize you, but that's what said Shane's hardest laugh when I came in because I told him I went to the coach. He goes, so this is your first time playing uh, organized ball, huh? And I was like, yeah. He goes, what position do you think you want to play? And I said, I go, I mean, it looks like you already got your quarterback set. So <laughs> I'd be willing to toss a couple and see if you like what you see. I could throw some routes if you want me to. I said, it seems like you already got your quarterback set, so there's that. I guess maybe tight end, I said. And he was like, no, dude, you're like offensive or defensive line. And I was thinking like, head coach. And then he's like, you're slow, too, so offensive line, not yeah. even defensive line. And, uh, and just, yeah. Over the course of that week, I was like, I think I'm getting the hang of this. And he just yelled at me, he embarrassed me in front of everybody. Mm-hmm. I was like, fuck this, dude. Yeah. I don't need this. No, I get that. Because yeah. you like, you think you're like, oh, especially in those moments of being a fat. Yeah. I'm also going to be a liability. Like, I was going to be a liability because what I didn't realize, that's where I was fucking up too over the course of the week, and it was not getting much better, was I also thought offensive line, the job, you know, I don't inspam a kid. So it's like, I don't inspect what their job is. I just think you block the guy who's in front of you. Mm-hmm. Four guys are trying to run towards you, and four guys are trying to block, or five. Them, yeah. mm-hmm. You have the one in front of you, like, make sure he doesn't get to the quarterback. And it's so, so much more complicated than sure. that. Sure. <laughs> like, very few times you just block the guy who's right in front of you. That's like, most of the time you don't do that. So it's pretty wild. Like, uh, and I was just like, I'm a liability. Mm-hmm. They'll let me on the team because they just have to, I get. And I was just like, I fuck this, dude. I'm going to get out. Huh. And then the uh, kid and can't catch a break. Talk about a different time, though. The coaches who were our teachers would call me in the hallway a lot. Jesus. Pretty wild. That's crazy. But like almost like in a ball Wait, busty buddy qu- way though. For quitting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. But they were like, you know, it's like, yeah, sorry. He goes, maybe if you stop being a faggot and get out there on the field and something, you're like, I don't think you can say that to me. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus oh, Christ. Man. The life and times. It's nuts. What the fuck? Chronicles of Jason. The Chronicles of Jason. <laughs> I feel like Dennis Miller on Joe Dirt. I'm gonna ring this for I'm gonna ring this for every hour I can. <laughs> Do you shave your hair like that or is you just grow in all white trashy like that? Oh fuck. Oh, man. <sighs> Jay. Did I you mean, like that school? The in Jersey? Because it almost weird. seemed like you were about to come into your own out there. Maybe. Uh, 
That didn't happen. No, I didn't. You know what? It's just fine. I, just, I got my group of friends out there, and then it just kind of became regular yeah, after just kinda, a while. Just like, regular. I just kind of fell into like play. And I still stayed as friends with some of the guys back in mm-hmm. Philly. Were you driving to school? Some t- well, yeah. And t- but then I got a tattoo <laughs> underage, and my mom let me not drive the car for six months. <laughs> what was that tattoo? Uh, my name in Old English, really tiny, <laughs> way up here. And I went to... This is a funny thing. I went to. Uh, That's every. That was my fucking dream tattoo. Was old English yeah. initials right here. It was. I know. You saw it on somebody who Somebody's, was muscular yeah, and it looked like, cool. Ooh, I remember being like fifteen. Me and my boys like can't wait till my number comes in. It was this big. I mean, it was this big on my arm. So small. I was so afraid my mom was going to see it. And we played basketball every day after school. And I got it done. I lied. To the, but there's a place though. It's called Jersey. Oh, I should. Yeah, Jersey Devil Tattoo still stands. Probably new owners. Let's hope. But that was the go your get picture on the wall. That was the go get tattoos underage. Gotcha. Write a fake note from your parents. They just accept it. A note. They That's just accept. They just accept it. Like joining the army. <laughs> um, no idea. And uh, so funny. One of my biggest tattoos is done by that place. But I got it done. Uh, real small up here at Old English. Went home, and was coming back from playing basketball i had a hoodie on zip up hoodie over my like a sleeveless shirt and i was just running upstairs to change and i started taking the the hoodie off uh, and then i pulled it down halfway down my arm and then pulled it right back up and my mom from the kitchen was like it. what's that what is that my step pop trying to save my ass he was like oh it's fake it's fake terry don't worry about it. it's fake it's fake and uh good step dad uh-huh. yeah he was he was doing a cool thing and then she was like is it fake and i was like oh yeah that yeah it's just fake and then she came over and thumbnailed it, like, and I was like, "Oh, it's not fake, you know? It's not fake. It's not." I'm so. And she, uh, it's funny. Yeah, she took the car. She wouldn't let me drive for six months, which was my. I accepted that because her other thing was, I'm gonna go to that tattoo place oh, and I'm gonna have them shut down. And I go, Mom, please don't make me the new kid at school. Who shuts down the coolest thing happening oh, in town? Would, like, could you imagine? Like, I mean, yeah, with your kid, luck, how did that not happen? Fucking fat new kid comes to town, and his mom <laughs> shuts down the tattoo parlor. Marcus, get out here and fight yeah, him. Yeah, some weird <laughs> germs in jail. <laughs> oh, God. oh, dude. I mean, <clears throat> yeah. <sighs> so, guys, that's like the sixth through eighth. Ninth grade. <laughs> I mean, we, that, I think we covered four at. years. <laughs> <laughs> just, just to wrap up this time period, um, you graduated. Mm-hmm. What were the SATs like? Did you remember? Do you remember taking them? I didn't take them. Didn't yeah, take I the think SAT. We talked about them. Uh, the yeah, I did. Okay. The, uh, I took the. I think the PSATs they made us take in school. I just did a when they told us you could leave as soon as you're done. I just did a design in Scantron and left. And you walked in graduation. Yeah, it got rained out though. <laughs> So after they of did it, of course it did. There's a there's, they there's tried been to do a, a storm cloud following <laughs> you this whole time, boy. <laughs> they, they tried to do it on the field. Uh, my drunk uncle Tommy came. <laughs> And came on the field before everything and started saying, it's my dad's side of the family, my step, I, well, my, my, my dad's stepbrother. I love him, though. Uncle Tommy's one I remember uh, giving my mom the biz. Really? Did you get that story? My dad's step... Wait, say it again? My dad's stepbrother, Tommy, my Uncle Tommy, who I love for a brief while, was split up from his, from my Aunt Trish. And him Maybe. and my mom hooked up for a little bit. I think we I do remember you talking I, you're, you're about that. You're not positive, though, In the van. You? He had a van, didn't he? And we drove. They drove me to my... Yes. Yes. Yeah. My godmother's house. Yeah. It's a spider web of trash for you. Yeah. Uncle Tommy showed up. My dad came to the graduation. <laughs> On the... <laughs> <laughs> my graduation, my dad comes into town. He goes with me right before I graduate, or not long before, is when uh, I lost my virginity. Mm-hmm. And the girl I lost my virginity to was 22. I was 17. She was 22. You brought a note for your parents, though. Trouble so it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> my mom says it's cool. My mom says it's fine. Um, but she's, uh, so she's hanging out, and my dad takes me and her the morning of my graduation to a diner for breakfast uh, in South Jersey. And just at one point, I asked, like, he goes, have you ever thought about being with a father? And He's kidding, but he goes, you ever think about being with a father and son at the same time? And you're like, Dad, Jesus. I'm 17. This is weird for you to say that. What? That was weird. Can you pass the maple syrup, please? That's oh, fucking dude, when he crazy. First, when he first met my uh, ex-wife, uh, he was in the back seat of the car while we were driving uh, her to go. She was going to go dancing with a friend of hers. And me and my, my dad was going to come with me to my spots. This is the first time I'd seen him in. 10 years 
and we're gonna and my ex wife's in the passenger seat and uh he was like, man, he goes, you look good. He goes, you don't worry about her going out looking like that with everything all hanging out like the thing. And I was like, no, it's, it's fine. It's, it's fine. And he, dude, me and my ex-wife still laugh about this. Dude. His head pops between the two seats and he goes, your breasts are amazing. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's a closer, dude. This guy's closing ass. He was looking for his fourth ex-wife. <laughs> Your breasts are fantastic. I mean, with all due respect, you got huge jugs. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> hey, I don't. I'm I, from I, Ohio. This is how we treat a lady. I hope I'm not crossing the line here, but those are nice hoots. <laughs> uh, that's yeah. That was my dad. That was dad meeting my ex-wife. For the first that's time. insane, dude. Yeah, dude, he's the best. So you guys swing or what? <laughs> You guys party, but Uncle Tommy on the field What's of it? graduation. <laughs> he's doing donuts. Or he something? run no. He runs over to me and he starts going. He's, I think it's hilarious at the time, but I mean it is a lot. He's screaming because like people like adults are getting involved. Like sir, you need to. He's like that is my Jew boy. Uh, oh, hey Jew boy, get over here. Kiss me on the mouth. He's like kiss me on the mouth. Like uh, what are you afraid your friends are gonna think you're gay? Come on, hey Jew boy. This is my Jew little fat. Hey fat Jew boy. Like fat and all the thing. I'm like. Oh God! <laughs> Are you out there in your gown and shit like that? Like this waiting is the grad- to walk, waiting to walk, and then it was a they, denim gown. Then lightning strikes. <laughs> what? Like in the distance, lightning strikes. The sky gets black, and they go. They did about three names, and they go. Okay, you know what? We're just gonna have you guys. We're gonna go inside. The storm's coming, so uh, pick up your diplomas in your homeroom classrooms, and uh, everybody, congratulations, class of 1999. You're all graduated. So no name saying at all, and then. My gr- my poor grandmother is there. It's chaos. There's one opening of the fence to get back into the school. It's just, I, my I mean, uncle Tommy. On, my uncle Tommy, without asking, picks my grandmother up like a like a fucking baby, and hands her over the fence to somebody who picks her down. It was what the, what the, the fall of Saigon. But I was also 17, so I tell you what. Everybody afterwards, we rushed back, and me and the girl I lost my virginity to got back to my mom's house first. Got one in. Yeah. Didn't matter. As long as you get one in, it, 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 it change, gotta it win. makes everything all right. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> shit. Oh, God. Ladies man. and gentlemen, Mr. Big J. Okerson, Chronicles of Jason, Volume 3. You're coming back, Until right? next time, baby. Oh, we could just have a set date. I'll just keep coming back. <laughs> I told my manager, I told my manager, I said, I think I'm like having a real series going over there. Are you garbage? He goes, keep doing it. <laughs> keep doing it. Yeah, I got a crowd work special I'm putting out in a couple months. Let's yeah. please. Oh, buddy. Buddy, yes. yes. Well, of course. It's always, it's always. Yeah. Okay. This, this, I mean, I, I love think, you guys, like man. I said, for his, for history's sake, we need to keep documenting. My head oh, hurts. Dude, how funny you guys are and, and what you guys are accomplishing, Thank you, dude. Buddy. It's fucking, it's so impressive. <sighs> And uh, you guys are hilarious. All Thank deserved, you, man. man. Means the world coming. Gang, coming Legions up. of Skanks, The Bomb Fire, The SDR Show. Uh, specials out on YouTube. Anything else you want the folks out there to know? Plug any dates. It's coming out next week. Any dates, yeah. any uh, socials, next, whatever. Next week date? Yeah. Uh, Chicago, Schaumburg uh, Improv in Chicago coming up. And then Just for Laughs in Vancouver. Two shows, uh, two nights. Uh, only Friday and Saturday, so make sure you get tickets for that. At BigJComedy.com. Yeah. Big J. Okerson, the one of the best. The, yeah, the, for my money's worth, the best oh, stand-up comedian. It's and crazy. He'll, he'll be back for volume four, and we didn't even get the so much. <laughs> I think we stopped in eighth grade. We're still it? kind of in high <laughs> oh, school. Oh, we just got to graduate. We He red herringed a little bit. We ended up at graduation, but there's more meat on the bone. There's more meat on the bone. <laughs> <laughs> Kippy, what do you got for him? Uh, guys, we're on tour right now. All tickets are available at AreYouGarbage.com. Those shows are moving quick, so get those tickets. Baby, we love you. Thank you. We love you, gang. We'll see you next week. Peace. Peace.